Aren't they cute? These are miniature houses, but they show a very typical scene here in Norway. Those red sheds, cabins, houses against the very green landscape. Photography-wise, that is awesome for color photographs because of the contrast that those two colors together create. That is something that we lose in monochrome, though. Ideally, in black and white photography, we'll find contrast elsewhere, but sometimes playing with the colors of a scene can be very helpful and it can improve our images quite a lot. So in this video, we'll see how we can take advantage of very colorful scenes for our black and white photography. Just one side. All right. This uh, will do just fine. This is what happens when you are on the road. You have no studio or Anywhere is your studio, actually. That is going to happen a few times. Anyway, the first example we'll see today is one that is just a few hundred feet down the road that way. It's a beautiful red shed sitting in green and yellowish grass with a beautiful peaks in the background. This scene is all about the contrast between that shed and, well, everything else in the frame. As you can see, this is easily done in color because of the contrast between the tones of the red shed and the green landscape. It is the contrast between these two colors that makes this image work. In black and white, though, it doesn't work quite as well. It's still beautiful, but it's lacking something. We can try to make it better by increasing that contrast between the subject and the background. Because this is a raw file, we have all the original information there, including the color information. In editing software like Lightroom, we can adjust the luminosity of each color independently. That way, we can work only on those red and orange tones of the shed and try to darken them to match the contrast that we had in the color photograph. So this is slightly better. The contrast between the subject and the background is slightly higher and just by touching the colors. However, in my opinion, that background is still too detailed to the point that it competes for the viewer's attention with the uh, subject. Instead of being the, the context that the background should provide, it is almost like a second subject to the image. Luckily, I was able to revisit the same scene a couple of days later and I got the right conditions, the conditions I needed to make the image I wanted to make. Here, I used the atmospheric conditions along with tweaking the colors of the shed and even the luminosity of uh, the grass to create the contrast I needed. This is a technique, a tool, I don't always use, but it is important to know about it because it can come in very handy when you need it. For example, I used it extensively on my images from Madeira to lighten the greens of the grass to increase the contrast between the dark trees and the rest of the landscape. A more subtle example is this one from Lake Michigan. It was a beautiful image already, but the horizon line was kind of bothering me a little bit, I couldn't unsee it once I saw it. It just didn't fit right with the main line in the image that was that fence, that dock. So by playing with the blues in post, I was able to blur it enough so it wasn't a distraction anymore. I don't have anything against the horizon. I like to have that there sometimes, as you can see in this other image from the very same Lake Michigan, but in this case, it fit much better with the vertical line of the dock as opposed to the previous image. More about tweaking the blues, because of course, this is something we can do to manipulate the appearance of the sky. For example, in this image I made in Italy, I didn't like the way the clouds were showing right out of the box. By making the blues lighter, they blended better with the light mood of the picture, making the whole thing a little bit dreamier. 
I think you are getting the point by now, but let me show you one last example. I took this photograph last year in Indiana, an American flag that was underwater in a lake. It was pretty good with just the basic adjustments, but by making the red tones of the flag darker, I was able to bring back the contrast of the red stripes and the white stripes. So there you have it, the power of playing with colors in black and white photography. Of course, this is one of the main advantages of shooting digital because you have the raw file with all of that information, but this is something that you can take advantage of if you should film as well. The main difference is that it's something that you'll have to do at the time of taking the picture. It's a decision you have to make beforehand. I used to have a red and orange filter. They are widely used to increase the overall contrast of the image. To do something like we saw in the first example today, to make the reds darker and the blues lighter, we need the opposite. We need a blue filter, a filter that will let the blues through but blocks those red and orange tones. Or you could shoot a color film stock and then convert it to black and white in the darkroom. That way you will have the same information as a raw file, kind of. Anyway, this was just a quick overview of how I use color in my black and white photography. As I said, it's not something I use very often, and when I do, it's usually in a very subtle way. But I think it's very useful to know about this because it's uh, what can make your image go from good to great. Before I let you go, I would like to thank all of my patrons for their support. I've been updating my Patreon page with uh, some behind the scenes and some photographs that I've been taking on this uh, road trip across Norway. There is a car coming. In any case, if you want to support my work, you'll find a link to the Patreon page in the description down below and also links to my uh, website where you can purchase print and books. This is all for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.